Browns and Texans facing off Sunday at 1 o'clock. Deshaun Watson's return to Houston. His first game as the Browns' starting quarterback. Uh, Ashley, let's get right to it. Uh, Deshaun Watson spoke for the first time on Thursday since he was initially suspended or the, the settlement was reached on his suspension. Uh, a much-anticipated press conference as he did not speak on Wednesday. That, of course, was a big topic. But when he did finally go to the podium, no, no non-football questions, but what did you kind of take away from what he had to say? Well, the non-football questions was, I think, the biggest initial takeaway because he kind of started with this long opening statement, kind of similar to what coaches do. Um, understandable because we hadn't heard from him in over three months. And, and he said, you know, he had been advised by his legal team, his clinical team to not discuss anything that wasn't football related. So we asked him about the counseling he had to undergo as part of his settlement between the NFL and the NFLPA regarding his 11 game suspension. Uh, he wouldn't get into that. He was asked if he think what he would have to say his message to fans who believe he should not be a face of an NFL franchise Given these sexual misconduct allegations against him, he sidestepped that. I tried to ask him about, we know that um, plaintiff's attorney, Tony Busby, is going to have several of his accusers in attendance in a suite on Sunday. Um, I asked him about going into that atmosphere. He declined to answer that. Um, he wouldn't say when he would talk about his side of the story, which I know he, he mentioned in the summer that he hopes to tell his side of the story, whatever that means. Um, and he said he, he couldn't give an answer on when that would be. So that was the number one overall takeaway. The number two overall takeaway, I think, is just that he seems very confident to me that even though it's been two years that he's played, that he, he seems excited to play with this offense. He thinks that he can fit in. He spent a lot of this time doing what he can away from the Browns to try to make this transition as seamless as possible. And he just seems like a guy right now who's very focused on executing what he's given, executing the opportunities that are there. And, and he just seems really excited to play with the other parts of this offense. So the other part of this, of course, Ashley, you know, we heard from Amari Cooper. We heard from Joel Batonio. Uh, you know, we've heard from other offensive players about Deshaun Watson getting his timing back and what it's sort of like to play with Deshaun and, and what this might look like with him. What have you sort of picked up from people uh, regarding that? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the interesting thing, right? And I tried to get at this with Amari uh, this morning. You know, I think there was some speculation like, oh, is it going to be harder for these guys to transition from, from one quarterback throwing them the ball for the first 11 games of the year, these last three months, now going to Deshaun Watson? Um, and Amari kind of said like, yeah, of course, there's going to be any transition when you go from one uh, quarterback to the other, but that Deshaun Watson, maybe his biggest strength as a quarterback is his accuracy. And, and we've heard that time and time again, you know, actually the defensive guys on this team were the ones who brought it up first since Deshaun Watson has been back in practice. Martin Emerson on Monday told us, you know, he's seen him. There are balls that Deshaun Watson can place that only the receiver can get to. So Amari Cooper said that has made this transition easier. You know, it's it, a big part of it sounded like getting the cadence down and things like that, that he talks to guys a little different than, than Jacoby Brissett does. Alex Van Pelt brought that up today. So they've been working a lot on, on those technical things, it seems. But it just sounds like to me what I've gathered, given Deshaun Watson's ability and his accuracy, which are things he's been lauded for throughout his career, um, that that, that may, has made this transition easier for those pass catchers to adapt to a new quarterback midseason. Yeah, I, I really liked kind of hearing him talk about how he, he listened to Jacoby and, and all that stuff and, and yeah. watching film on guys. I, I really sort of liked hearing him discuss that side of it. You know, obviously mm -hmm. it, it, you know, understandably gets lost uh, among the non the non football stuff. But he sounded to me like a player who I, I don't know if this transition is going to be super difficult for. That's that's what I keep thinking. And I also keep wondering, you know, I, I talked about this on Sports for CLE yesterday, too. Like, given Deshaun Watson's age, he's only 27. Like, I wonder, this will take years to figure out. But if this time off, these two years off, 700 days, if that is actually going to pro prolong his career in the long run, that he's been able to maybe get right injury-wise, some long-term things that were, if they were bothering him, and, and just to get a break on his body. But 
um, yeah, you know, it was really interesting to kind of hear him talk about that mental side of things. And, and I asked him about that and he brought up, you know, it's not like he was just sitting at home watching the Browns all the time, right? He was obviously doing a lot of that, but he talked about, he loves to, he's like a football junkie. It seems like he was watching every starting quarterback in the league. He in particular, he singled out Tua Tagovailoa uh, and Patrick Mahomes as two guys. He really tries to draw a lot of what they do. Uh, for his own purposes, he said, I want to see everybody succeed because I want to be able to take things from what they're doing and, and kind of implement them in my own way. I thought that was interesting. Uh, talk about watching a lot of obviously opposing defenses, staying up to date on what defenses across the league are doing, how he as a quarterback can kind of go against those schemes and, and neutralize them when he gets out there. So it, like you said, I think that that might get lost in today. But, you know, I did include that in, in my big story I did from the day just because it is kind of an interesting behind the scenes look that since this is the first time we've talked to him post suspension, this is the first time we're getting any of that. All right, real quickly, uh, before we wrap this up, non Deshaun Watson news, uh, Denzel Ward pops up on the injury report with an ankle and a hamstring did not practice. He was limited on Wednesday and then David and Joku not practicing for the second straight day. We don't really have any updates on any of those guys, if I'm not mistaken, Ashley, because we didn't hear from Kevin Stefanski today, but obviously just something to monitor as we go into Friday. Correct. Yeah, I think that's definitely something to keep an eye on Friday. We did talk to him about David Njoku on Wednesday. We know this is a different injury than the one he dealt with last week, so I'm sure we'll get an update on him. Kevin Stefanski, of course, never too keen to rule anybody out or in that early in the week the last time we talked to him. So definitely something to to keep an eye on. I mean, I think we know the Houston Texans kind of are what they are, but those are two very, very notable names for the Browns on both sides of the ball, especially, you know, David Njoku. I think everyone very eager to see what he can look like in this offense with Deshaun Watson throwing him the ball. And he's coming off a game where he had an incredible catch. I know he didn't want to call it the catch of his career, but I will <laughs> call it that. It was the catch of his career. I'll call it that too. I'm with you. I'm going to back yeah. you up on this. Uh, Browns Texans, one o'clock on Sunday. We'll cover it all at cleveland.com slash Browns.